So, I was waiting for YouTube to come right up and they are up. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. How are you doing? Hello, family of truth. How are you doing? Now, um, let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We bless, praise, worship, and glorify you. We acknowledge your presence in our world. We thank you because we know you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the creator of the heavens and the earth. And all glory belongs to you. And we ask you for the abundant knowledge you promised us. Father, let that, no uh, Father, let that knowledge dwell with us. Let it enlighten us. Let it direct us, O Lord. In Yahushua's name, I pray. And the good people in the house all said, Amen. How are you all doing? Today, I want to talk about the Samaritan devil. And um, I want to touch a few of the verses I used yesterday. Normally, when I do a very deep teaching on Sunday, I tend to do a little touch up during the week just in case uh, people missed important spots it's like when you're done detailing a car you go around with a flashlight trying to check if you missed any spot so that's exactly what i usually do at the beginning of the week um, if you missed yesterday's teaching it's still available online youtube.com forward slash daddy freeze teaches our website has been launched freenationchurch.org yup and um babes yes. uh how much more do we need for the maintenance and all that We, ha we need 150 more K for the, um, the hosting and uh, one, year maintenance. one year maintenance. And okay. Okay, so we need the developer to work with us to maintain it for a whole year. It's a lot of work. Tazewell has not gone to her own work today at all. She was here, lies lazing with the website guy. It's a ton of work, trust me uh website team sorry thank you my love how <laughs> i know is you even me no fit do i'm no be downgrade so um like i said earlier on today we're talking about some of the things i some of the issues i raised um yesterday and uh i would really love us to quickly not wasting any time at all just touch on them if you watch one of my teachings uh, from way back called the, um, the monetization of the gospel you would see there are many things I complained about back then uh, one thing you would have realized is christ said something to the woman in john chapter 4 he said he will give her water that's like a bubbling spring meaning if you watch if you go back one year ago and watch the free nation message of one year ago and you come to today you'll see like there's an upgrade like there's a refresher course like some things have been adjusted uh, by virtue of the fact that we are clearer on those things. Uh, you can see that our message is a bubbling spring. It is is not stagnant because the more you walk with Christ, the more he reveals himself to you. And the more he reveals himself to you, the more you realize you cannot be where you were yesterday. That is why Christ is a way to God. You can't stand still on the way to God. I want you to look at someone. But I said I was going to make this a short message, but I'm just being moved and I really have so much to do today, so I can't make it a long message. So work with me. 
You can't stand still on the way to God. The way is dynamic. It is progressive. It is a bubbling spring. I want you to look at someone beside you. Slap them a high five if you can. Wake them up. Send a ping to them. Send them a WhatsApp chat. Anything you can to wake them up and say, you cannot stand still on the way to God. If Christ is a way to God, Christ is a journey towards God. He is not a point you get to where you stand still. Airplanes can't stand still, except for a few that can hover. Most airplanes, if they go below a certain speed, they'll fall out of the sky like a leaf. It's called an aeronautic stall. So airplanes have to keep moving to generate lift with their wings and to overcome gravity with the power of the engine. Sorry, they overcome gravity with the wings and they overcome and they're able to move forward with a thrust from their engines so christ is that thrust in your engine pushing you forward there's resistance air as simple as it looks pulls a plane back so you've got to be able to move forward and if you don't move forward, you cannot have lift. Simple aeronautics. It's like many sharks. If they stop moving, they're not like other fish that can just stand and breathe. No, a shark actually needs to be moving so that water can flow through its gills. If it stops moving, it stops breathing. So what I'm here to tell you about today is perpetual motion. You've got to be in motion. By motion, I don't mean you've got to start. You've got to strap a backpack on, and start walking, uh, walking forward. It means in your spiritual life there must be growth. If you join the free nation today, it will look like we're talking nonsense. You will not be able to catch up with many of the things we're saying. That's why you need to watch some of our old videos. And um, I'm going to put a compilation of the most important ones because you can't really watch 700 videos. So you've got to watch the most important ones to have like a, a little background and then be able to understand where we are. And from time to time, I promise I will break the message down in such a way that people will be able to tap into uh, the message and understand what we're talking about. If you go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 13, I used this to begin the sermon yesterday and... Um, I want us to talk about it because this is one of the Gospels, one of the parts of the Gospels that have been monetized. And it's one of the reasons why I tell you all to get your noses out of Queen James Bible. Queen James, the greatest or one of the greatest slave traders mankind has ever known, is in no way going to save you. Let me ask you a question. If the white man knew that the power of Jesus, there was power in the name of Jesus, and people could be set free. Would he teach his slaves? Why was I getting, why am I buying slaves if they're going to be free? I don't want my slaves to be free. It doesn't pay me for my slaves to be free. And if they try to run away, I'd shoot them like they did to the slaves just so they wouldn't be free and then they give them a name that sets them free does it make sense to you obviously there's something wrong what they did was they gave them a slave master's god to a slave so that the slave will be in perpetual bondage but the knowledge of christ is not to keep you in bondage but rather to set you free however You've got to know the truth about Christ or else you'd continue being in slavery a hundred years after they've set you physically free. Your mind is still in chains. Look around at Africa. Africa is in chains. 
People are walking free on the road, but their minds are in chains. They go in the morning and come back home and never forget to go to see that man who's going to take a big chunk of their money monthly, leaving them with just enough to feed while he flies around in a private jet, makes good money, lives well, his children school abroad, yet you face the consequences of living in a country that has its religious and political leaders in bed, starving you of your much needed amenities and resources. So, like I said earlier on, there are forces pulling you down and pulling you back. And I compared it to an, to an airplane. Um, an airplane has drag, that's going to drag you back. And in your spiritual life, there are many things that are your drag. It's going to be your religion. It's going to drag you. But you're, you're going to have to fight against religion to get to your spirituality. And then you're going to have the gravity. Things are going to pull you down, like literally try to hold you down. And nothing is better at holding people down than their own friends and family and relatives. Let me tell you something. Your enemies cannot betray you. Hello? Babes, are you there? Your enemies cannot betray you. You know why? Because your enemies, they're not capable of betrayal. They're your enemies. They're going to try to hurt you, but they can't betray you. Let's, let, let's talk about the word betray. What does the word betray mean? Let's just look up the dictionary. Just pop up any dictionary you have. What does the word betray mean? By treacherously giving information to an enemy. Betraying them to the Germans. For you to betray someone, you have to be with that person in the, or you have to make that person feel like you're in the same camp with them. So your enemies can never betray you. It's your friends and your family. And many times in Nigeria, we don't go forward because so many people are holding us back. We're going to think about what is this person going to say about me? Oh my goodness. I have now found out that Lucifer was never Satan. It was error upon error from Jerome to Constantine to, to King, sorry, Queen James. How we have it, back-to-back -back errors. And all of a sudden, someone is saying that he's not Satan. I can see the sense he's making. But how do I tell my friends? How do I tell my family? Wouldn't they think I'm crazy? That's holding you down right there. So like an airplane to walk, an airplane to fly is the same power you need to walk in Christ. You have to fight against drag and gravity. Drag is pulling you back. Gravity is pulling you down. To fight against drag, you need thrust. You need to be propelled forward with the word of God. And to combat gravity, you need lift. And that's what the wings of the plane are for. So, one of the most important lessons from the scripture is the monetization of the scripture. And it's one of the forces affecting a Christian's life. The gospel has been monetized. If you read Matthew 13 and 12 from King James, it says, For whosoever had to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever had not from him shall be taken even that which he had. Oh, I've seen my former pastor, the Galaxian man. I've seen him murder this particular verse. I've seen him twist it 
and make it sound like it was finances or money Christ was talking about. But I thank God today that we have the opportunity to read in Greek. We have the opportunity to study the word. And we now know today that this wasn't talking about money. Rather, it was talking about the knowledge Christ came to share with us. So if you read this same verse from the book of Matthew, chapter 13 and 12, it says, To those who listen to my teachings, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge, not an abundance of money, an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, which is 90% of today's church, y'all are not listening. Even the little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Even the little you have, you're going to lose if you don't seek an abundance of understanding. And how do you get this abundance of understanding? By listening to the teachings of Yahushua. Go with me to the book of Hosea. Sorry, my network's a bit slow today. Just bear with me. Hosea chapter 4 and 6. Once again, I'll read it in King James. Just to show you the many errors therein. King James says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Now, if you read this in the New Living Translation, it says, My people are destroyed because they don't know me. It's not just knowledge. It's the knowledge of God. It's a specific type of knowledge. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. So this is not speaking about the knowledge of understanding how viruses work or how technology works or how to build houses. No, it's simply talking about the knowledge of God which is so vital to the growth of a Christian. It is so vital for you to have that bubbling spring. If you can go with me very quickly to the book of John chapter 4, then we'll eventually end up in John chapter 8, and I'll be rounding off. Like I said, it's not a main teaching. It's just for you to understand some basic Things John chapter 4. I'm, I'll be reading 13 and 14. John chapter 4, 13. If you're there. Let me know you're there. And this is Yahushua talking to the Samaritan woman. He said, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. Anyone who drinks this water that we have on the earth will become thirsty again. No matter how you do it, if you drink water, You'll, be, you'll still be thirsty. No matter the quality of the water, no matter how nice the water, no matter how clean the water, no matter the temperature of the water, once you drink water, you will be 
thirsty again. And let's move to 14 now. And I want to read this from a copy of the Greek manuscript that I have here. John chapter 4 and 14. It says, Hod an piek tu hydatos. However, whoever may drink of the water that ego doso auto o me, I will give him never not dipsy will thirst. Is ton Iona alato hydro to the age instead the water ho doso auto jinstai that I will give to him will become an auto pege hydatos halomenu e zoen ionon. A spring of water welling up into eternal life. A spring of water. NIV uses the word welling up. NLT says bubbling spring. King James says, In him shall be a well of spring, a water springing up. New King James as a fountain of water. All these things point to constant motion. None of them is stagnant. He did not say, I'll give you water. I'll give you a welling water, a bubbling water, a fountain. Have you ever seen a fountain that is not blowing? That's not a fountain. It's a fountain because it's splurging out water, because it's bubbling out water, because it's welling out water. So for those who drink from the cup of Christ, and if you go with me to the book of John chapter 6, John chapter 6 clearly explains this. John chapter 6 says, he told them, you will drink my blood and eat my flesh. And what is his flesh and what is his blood? It's the truth about Yahweh that is a bubbling spring a fountain of life inside John chapter 6 and 35 I am the bread of life whoever comes to me will never be hungry again whoever believes in me will never be thirsty but you haven't believed in me enough though you have seen me However, those the Father has given me will come to me and I will never reject them. And I pray that you will be counted among those who see Christ. Not the version of Christ the current church is teaching. Because that's a distortion. A contradiction, a contrast to what or whom Christ really was. And I want to end with this particular verse taken from John chapter 8. Where I got the title of today's message. The people retorted. John chapter 8 and 48. You Samaritan devil. Didn't we say all along that you were possessed by a demon? And Christ replied, no, I have no demon in me. For I honor my father and you dishonor me. And although I have no wish to glorify myself, God is going to glorify me. He's the true judge. I tell you the truth. Anyone who obeys my teachings will never die. For you to have that bubbling spring, that fountain of life, for you to have the welling up that Yahushua promised the Samaritan woman, you have to listen to and obey 
his teachings when he says pray for your enemies if you pray that your enemy should die you're never gonna have the spring if he didn't collect tithe and you go on to pay tithe to a thief you will not have that welling up if he never demanded your first salary of the year and you go and pay it to a lout you're never gonna get the spring in water he said obey me do not obey the world you instead have obeyed the world and have called lucifer a samaritan devil while you created a jesus from god knows where gave him the birthday of the sun gods gave him the resurrection of the river goddesses Easter was literally named after Esther. And then he said, three days and three nights will I be in the belly of the earth like the sign of Jonah. And then people say Good Friday to Easter Sunday. It's like you have finally lost sanity. How can you count three days and three nights between Friday and Sunday? Friday evening and Sunday morning. Where's the three day and, where's, where are the three days and the three nights? But that's what the world dictates and you follow the world and you call your god a devil you call him a samaritan devil like the scholars if you read john chapter 8 from the beginning if you read it from the beginning chapter 2 but early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. The teachers of religion. Ready to condemn just the way religion condemns. But me and my family are not going to be dragged down by religion. Instead, we're going to fly. We're going to get the lift of the bubbling spring. The living water, the welling water, the fountain of life. Because we set out to obey and it is easy to obey the words of Christ. If only we can make it a culture, not a religion. And by default, you're a Christian, not by religion. Simply because you obey what Christ says. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all.